Good evening, my dear fiends, and welcome to our Season 10, that's right, Season 10 of Monster Movie Night, eh, Boris? <laughs> so glad you could make it, so glad we could be here. Imagine in the year 2019, we're celebrating our Season 10, our 10th season. And I just can't believe it, and I want to thank each and every one of you for staying with us all this time, coming back time after time after time, watching another scarifying, horrifying film here at uh, Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be your creepy old curator, uh, finding exhibits and artifacts for, you know, wonders to behold for your eyes only. <laughs> you do have a ticket, don't you? Eh, Boris, did you check for the tickets? You did? Uh, excellent. Because without a ticket, well, you know, you might have to be ejected. <laughs> no, you get to stay anyway, this time around. Right, Boris? Right. <laughs> ah! Speaking of tickets and museums and things like that, tonight's terror tale <laughs> is called Terra in the Wax Museum. And this particular film, my fiends, has, well, it is a museum all in itself. We have starring in it Ray Maland, you know, the guy with the X-ray eyes, <laughs> and Ms. Elsa Lanchester, the bride of Frankenstein herself, along with mm, Maurice Evans, Dr. Zaius of Planet of the Apes, as well as Broderick Crawford and Mr. John Carradine, the most famous of them all. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to tell you what films he's been in, do I now? Hmm? I better not have. <laughs> we all know Mr. John Carradine, don't we, Boris? <laughs> what a wonderful film. It's about a museum, as I said, Terror in the Wax Museum, a museum where exhibits may be coming to life, or it may be haunted, or it may have a murderer ensconced within its many, many facets of mm, wax imageries. <laughs> so, let us sit back while we're here in one museum, a monster museum, while you watch another type of monster museum. <laughs> right, Boris? Right. So, let's get started for Terra in the Wax Museum. Did your mama tell you not to turn on the TV at night? No, tell you. No! I've been watching you. <laughs>
What is it, Karkov? Are you so fond of her? Oh, I am sorry. But she can't stay with us. She must be destroyed. Oh, no, no. There's an unfortunate flaw in her pristine beauty. And you know, I always insist on perfection. Do pray, get it over with. Time is valuable. I apologize for keeping you waiting, Mr. Burns. As you can see, my work goes on long after the museum is closed. Let's get down to business. I have the bank graph and the papers right here. Oh, yes, the papers. Can we discuss it upstairs in the museum? Upstairs, downstairs. What difference does it make? You know, this is the third time I've been back. Yes, yes, I quite understand. You've been most patient. This way. He becomes so deeply attached to all the members of our family. He's really a most sensitive creature. Yeah, I can see that. All right, come on, let's go, let's go. de la Revolution and the unfortunate Marie Antoinette. Authentic in every detail. Even the guillotine was imported from France. Her hair turned completely white shortly before the execution, you know. Yeah. To pray. You gonna make a deal with me or not? Lizzie Borden, a countrywoman of yours, Mr. Burns. Fall River, Massachusetts. And her dominant 18... I've had the tour in lecture, thank you. This is where bloody Queen Mary sat. The setting was excellent, but there was a, an imperfection on the left side of her face that I detected only today. It's a pity she had to be destroyed. Well, she looked good enough to me. I've made an exhaustive life study of these famous and infamous people. I know every intimate detail of their lives and their physical makeups. I feel I'm actually living with them. It could be that you've lived with them for too long. Perhaps. Lately, strange things have occurred. Oh, what kind of strange things? Look at Jack the Ripper. It's as if he knows what I'm contemplating. He doesn't want me to sell. Do pray, that's hogwash. None of them want me to sell. They like it here. We've been together so long. Look, my operation in New York is very big. It's just off Broadway. Now, I'll set the figures up exactly as they're set up here. Your friends won't know the difference, believe me. Then there's poor Carco. I'm not buying any live monsters, just wax ones. The poor fellow knows nothing but this museum. There are institutions for freaks like that. Now, let's get these papers signed. Mr. Burns, may I ask for one more night to think it over? All right. All right, I'll give you one more night. But it's the last time I'm coming back, I promise you. I assure you the matter will be resolved in the morning. Just a minute. Are you stalling me just to jack up the price? Oh, no, no, your offer is quite fair. All right. Thank you, Good night, Mr. Bond. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. First day on train. Gee, but we're an happy crowd. Our artist is free and gay. Stones all day long while digging graves for corpses in the churchyard across the way fills me older brother's heart with song. Sis 
Sister Susie's sewing shreds. Me uncle drives a nurse. And now they've made an helper out of me. Me aunt's a casket draper. Ma's a lady undertaker. Gee, but we're an happy family. Gee, but we're an happy family. Good evening, Governor. What's your pleasure? A half and half, and send the boss over, will you? You're looking at the owner himself, Governor, Tim Fowley. Oh. Doesn't that gal know any cheerful songs? I just came from that spooky joint next door. Well, I don't blame him for wanting a bit of cheer, Governor. That's the den of fiends and loonies, that is. Bad enough in the daytime. <laughs> I wouldn't fancy it at night. Tell me something. How well do you know Dupre? Oh, better than I ever knew my old man. Dupre's a tenant of mine. I own the building. Cousin Katie's weaving wreaths, me boyfriend's hanging crepe. We are all as happy as can be. Was he always crazy or is he just going up his rocker dude old age? Grandma well, he, he may be a bit peculiar on and off, but uh, gentle and harmless as a tabby cat. <laughs> He's a good old boy. Gee, but we're at a... But we're a cheery bunch singing in memoriam Pleased to have another soul depart And seeing fires crackling in the crematorium Warms the cockles of me happy heart Flossie fetches for my Yeah, I got it. Oh, thanks. How do you get her to stop that funeral, dirge? Oh, and it's a long one, Governor. The only thing that shuts Laurie off is when some bloke takes a, a fancy to her and stands her a drink or two. I take a fancy to her, but not that lousy song. Good night, Laurie. Cheerio, Mr. Fowley. Sure you could, Governor, but not tonight. Oh, come on, I'll treat you right. No doubt, but uh, my engagement book's full up. Pop around in a day or so, there's a love. All right, in a day or so. Good night, Cockle. You betrayed us. No, 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 I wouldn't do that to you, Jack. Believe me, I wouldn't. Please believe me. Betrayer. J'accuse Monsieur de Puy, traitor. Liar, Dupre. No, Lizzie. No, I didn't lie to you. Please believe me. I didn't lie to you, Lizzie. Liar. I wouldn't lie to you, Lizzie. Please believe me. Liar. Dupre, we won't let you sell, Dupre. Oh, I'm not going to sell. I was talking about it, but I decided against it. Liar. Please believe me. Please. Betrayer. Liar. Liar. Traitor. Judas. Traitor. Liar. You've betrayed us. Liar! Liar! Traitor! You've betrayed us. Liar!
Karkov, is that you? My friends, I explained it to you. It's all right. Don't worry. Mr. Burns made me a very generous offer. I had to listen to him. Don't you understand? I had to. Liar. Liar. waiting here for the museum is closed. Won't be open for some considerable time, so why don't you all just go home peaceful? See London's very own Jack the Ripper. What's all this howling about? It's one of them bloody evil monsters from the Chamber of Horrors. Right there he was, walking straight out of the dusk. Oh, you ladies have got a touch of the Jim Jams. There's nothing in that place but dumps. Including the iron mighty police. Been dusted, no prints. Why are you taking a photograph of a wax figure? Well, he's a suspect, ain't he, Inspector? Now then, Mr. Flexner, you say you were a partner of the deceased. No, I did not say that, Inspector Daniels. I am not a legal partner. I was Mr. Dupre's assist uh, associate for a great many years. Hmm. Coroner tells me the death occurred six or seven hours ago. You uh, found the door securely locked when you came here at eight o'clock this morning? When I arrived at seven o'clock this morning. Ah, ah yes, seven. Bit early to report for work, isn't it? You don't open to the public until ten. I've already explained that. I live quite close by in High Holborn. I had a lot of work to catch up on, and uh, yesterday was my day off, so I went to Brighton. Hmm. Not aware of a train that arrives from Brighton that early in the morning? I came back from Brighton last night. Ah, yes, and, and went to your rooms? No, I spent the night with some friends in Longacre. I already explained that, too. Quite so, quite so. You explained it twice, without a hitch. Very nicely. Thank you, Mr. Flexner. Well, I told you everything I did at least twice. I guess I'm the last one to see Dupre alive. No. No, not the last one, Mr. Burns. Unless you murdered him. Inspector. I think you ought to have a look at what's turned up in the cellar. Oh. It's Karkov. Poor soul. I'd forgotten all about him. He'd be a hard one to forget. Not when you get used to him. 
Some dreadful accident when he was a child left him a deaf mute, and the police found him abandoned, didn't know what to do with him. So, Dupre took him in, gave him this place to live, mm -hmm. let him do odd jobs around here, treated him like a son. Mm -hmm. Some say not without reason. You have tried to question him, Sergeant Hall? Mm, he reads lips. I gather he didn't notice anything unusual during the night. I'd ask him a whole lot more. Such as, Mr. Burns? He knew I was discussing business with Dupre last night. He was here. You don't suggest he killed Dupre for that reason? No, but he could figure he's going to be out of a home and a job. Where would a freak like that go? He uh, seems to be genuinely grieved over the death of Dupre. He's been sobbing like a baby. He's a dummy. How do you know Dupre was dead? Who told him? I told him. <laughs> <laughs> I say he's sick. Look at all those pictures of that cheap woman. You're heading up a blind alley, Mr. Burns. The coroner says that you pray was stabbed by a right-handed man. This fellow's right arm is withered. Useless. Forget it. Bloody slaughterhouse. Strange, with all these weapons. Why did the killer go to the trouble of using the Ripper's scowl? Yet that's precisely what he did, and wiped it clean of fingerprints. Is there anything of value missing? Well, I don't see anything here. I'll take a look upstairs in Dupre's living quarters. Maybe he did it. A wax dummy, Mr. Burns. The real Jack the Ripper. You never caught him, did you? Sergeant Hawks here is a bit of an expert on Jack. He was assigned to the Ripper case for over a year when he first joined the yard. Yeah, not much I didn't learn about Jack, except who he is, where he is, and how to nab him. He committed his last murder over ten years ago and hasn't been heard from since. Could be that he came out of retirement because he didn't like the way he looked here in wax. I told you, sir. I got my orders. No one goes in here except on police business. And I told you... Oh, Inspector, tell this fool who I am. Excuse me. It's all right, Parker, all right. Mr. Southcott is the dead man's solicitor. I sent for him. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Terrible thing. Glad you're in charge, Daniel. Just poking my nose in at the preliminary investigation. Sergeant Hawks here will be in charge of the case and carry through. Hmm. Oh, uh, ladies, please. This is Inspector Daniels, Sergeant Hawks. This is Margaret Collins, Dupre's niece, and a guardian, Miss Hawthorne. They just arrived in my office from Suffolk when your message came. My sympathy, Miss. Poor uncle. I hadn't seen him in some time. I was so happy when he sent for us. And now... Dupre came to see me last week. He asked for his will, said he wanted to make a change in it. At the same time, he asked me to send for his niece and her guardian. We were to meet at my office this morning. How was the will changed? He never returned it. Uh, I assume it's still here. It isn't among his papers. Well, if there's no will, the closest relative inherits. And the only relative is Meg. Please, Julia, we don't need to go into all that now. Now is the best time. I'm this girl's legal guardian until she's of age. And I'm advising you that this place now belongs to her. Madam, I'm grateful for your legal counsel in this delicate matter. <sighs> Mr. Southcott. Excuse me, sir. As you well know, sir, I was Mr. Dupre's only associate for 20 years. And he promised faithfully that Clarkoff and I would be mentioned in the will and that we would inhabit this museum. You were, Mr. Flexner. But Dupre said he was changing that will. But you know very well he intended me to have it. You were paid for your services, were you not? A fraction of my worth. I staged and designed all these tableaus. And I fashioned every one of the good figures in here. It's no good arguing, Mr. Flexner. Until the will is found, Miss Collins must be regarded by the law as the legal heir. Come, Meg. Let's look over this ghastly business that you've come into. Is there any evidence of robbery, Mr. Flexner? No, nothing seems to be missing. The cash box with yesterday's receipts hasn't been touched. No secret compartments, vaults? None that I know of. I couldn't help overhearing. You the new owner, miss? I'm Miss Hawthorne. Please discuss any business matters with me. Well, I had a deal with Dupre to buy the waxworks. That is ridiculous. You never would have sold a museum. 
You probably tried to talk him out of it. We never even discussed it. He always promised that I would end up with the place. The man forgets his promises when you shove a fistful of money in his face. The offer is still open, ladies. We shall need a little time, Mr. Burns. Drop around after the funeral. Well, I've waited this long. Good day, lady. It does seem strange, Uncle would sell. He devoted his whole life to this place. Well, we may not sell either. Uh, first we'll move in, then we'll open for business and see how well the place does. Live here? Well, we can't afford a hotel, Meg. After all, this place is yours. Oh, and there's quite a crowd out in front. And I'm sure there are hundreds of dear, morbid souls anxious to pay to see where murder was done. That's crass and ghoulish. With poor Dupre not yet decently in his grave. It's all very well for you to moralize, Mr. Southcote. You're a rich lawyer and you can afford the sentiment. We can't. I mean to get as much out of this place as possible, as soon as possible. I'll let you know precisely how much you'll get as soon as I've had a chance to examine the estate. I expect an accurate accounting. Good day, madam. Miss Collins? Going back to the corpse? Yes. I'll drop you off. You're in charge now, Sergeant. Keep in touch with the yard. Yes, sir. Do you really intend to operate the museum, Julia? I certainly do. There's a great deal more to it than just opening the doors, you know. There are the lectures, the design and maintenance of the figures. Very well, Mr. Flexner. You may stay on and function as usual at your regular salary. That's most generous of you, considering I've spent a great deal of my life here and have nowhere else to go. And what about Karkov? I remember him, poor man. I saw him when I was here as a little girl. He does odd jobs around here and works for practically nothing. A shilling a week. Oh, his price is right. Uh, let him stay on for the moment. Thank you. It's all right, Cargo. You're going to stay. You're going to stay. Sergeant Hawks. See that he gets it. When will you remove your bobby from the door so that we can open for business? Shortly, Miss Hawthorne. Perhaps you'd care to go upstairs and have a look at your rooms while I step next door to the music hall for a moment? Yes, like man on the street. Used to drop me in for a pint and a chat now and then. A bit lonely, I should think. I mean, all he had was them dummies and Karkov. Then what about Karkov? Oh, Dupre treated him like his own. Did all sorts of kindly things for the poor dumb creature. Such as having him meet Laurie. Laurie? And Laurie Mel. She sings here. Dupre brought Karkov in here? Lord love us, no, sir. He took Laurie down to the beast soul in the cellar one day. Asked if she'd meet the ugly brute, smiled pretty and shake his hand. And, you know, talk to him sweet-like without turning green about the gills. And she did. Poor master broke out sobbing when she left. Only woman who ever treated him like a human. And the walls of his cell are covered with pictures of Miss Mel. He worships her. Did you see anyone lurking about in the street outside when you closed up last night? No. Peace shook fog, sir. Oh, Laurie might have. It's not likely, though. A girl with her looks don't walk far before she's got company, if you know what I mean. Perfectly. She's a streetwalker. Oh, that's a harsh word, sir. Laurie's just a friendly, good-hearted girl. Well, the two are not incompatible, are they? Well, thank you, Mr. Foley. You've been most helpful. Good day. They say it was Jack the Ripper slashed the old man's gullet. And they still standing in there with this bloody knife, ready to slash again. Mm. Excuse me, mind the back, please. Ladies and gentlemen, the museum is now open. Only those with tickets, if you please. There'll be another tour in an hour. Now, if you'll follow me. Just give your tickets to this gentleman here. Thanks. Poor Carl. 
Tarkov. It's terrible to trade on his appearance that way. Mm, he's no doubt hardened to it by now. In these aisles, ladies and gentlemen, you will meet some of the most fiendish monsters in all history. You'll meet vampires, cannibals, poisoners, stranglers, stabbers, and rippers. This is Willie Grossman, a meek and timid man. He was a sausage vendor in the railway station at Berlin. Now, when plump and pretty young country girls used to come to the railway station, he would entice them up to his rooms with the promise of work. And there he would murder them. Then he would dissect them, pickle the flesh, and grind it up into sausages and sell them at the railway station. Oh, I've had me last sausage. <laughs> this is Constable Henry Bolt, a London bobby who strangled 22 people in a little more than a year, just to relieve the monotony of his nightly rounds. This way, please. Now, here we have the infamous Lizzie Borden of Fall River, Massachusetts. Her intense dislike for her parents was celebrated by a famous ballad, which I'm sure you must have heard sung to the tune of Tarara Boomdie. Now, let me see, how does it go? Uh, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax. And then, to even up the score, she gave her father 40 more. <laughs> It is amusing, isn't it? This way, please. Horrible people. They really existed? And Mr. Flexner seems to enjoy the workings of such sick and twisted minds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if we just gather round, I will show you the most infamous murderer of all time. Bluebeard. Also known as Kamara the Accursed. Among his victims were his four wives, slain by strangulation, poisoning, bludgeoning, and burning. And now, if you'll come over here. Well. This is Lucrezia Borgia, daughter of a pope, patroness of poets, and a pretty poisoner of people in her younger and more frivolous days. However, in later life, she became a model of every virtue. Show us a bloody ripper. We want the ripper. Yeah. Very well. And there he stands. Jack the Ripper, this fiend with the skill of a surgeon, who has committed at least 20 murders in the city of London. And only this morning, another foul murder was committed in this very museum, with that same scalpel he has in his hand now. You see, Jack the Ripper was never caught. He could very well be alive today. He could have been in this room to examine his likeness. As a matter of fact, he could be in this room at this very moment. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you'll follow me to the next exhibit, I will show... Ah, uh -uh, madam, you keep your hands off Jack, and he might keep his hands off you. Those people actually seem to think Jack the Ripper killed my uncle. No, oh, that's just Flexner feeding their morbid imaginations. But if the Ripper was never caught, he could still be alive. Now, that's extremely unlikely. Believe me, I know about Jack. You're trying to make me feel better. But still, somebody did it. Well, that was the first tour. I think it went off rather well, don't you? Your stories were terrifying. They were meant to be. I suppose you've told them so often, they've become rather dull and tedious to you by now. Well, no, actually, it was my first time. 
You see, Mr. Dupre took the tours and gave the lectures. I thought he dwelt too much with the victims, so I urged him to spend more time with the murderers, their drives, their twisted motives, their phobias. And I was right, it was much more effective. Miss Collins, I'd like to go up and have another look at your uncle's papers and personal effects, if I may. Of course. Thank you, Miss Collins. Very good. We made more with Dupre dead than the old money grubber did when he was alive. What an awful thing to say, Julia. Oh, everybody's misfortune. Somebody's game. It's just as well you didn't arrive in London until this morning, Miss Hawthorne. Oh, but we arrived last night. It was very late. Uh, we wanted to be fresh for Mr. Southcote in the morning. We took rooms in a small hotel on Bow Street. Bow Street, just two blocks from here. Sergeant Hawkes, surely we're not suspects. No, 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 no. That was just a policeman's reflex. Come in. I've closed the museum for the night. I'll be back at my usual time in the morning. You have a key? Yes, of course. I always open up. I'll open. Give me the key. Mr. Flexner, that creature, Karkov. He never leaves the museum. I've already given him his supper. Supper? Uh, oh, yes. I hadn't thought of feeding him. I suppose he is quite a nuisance, but he makes an effective addition at the entrance. <laughs> he might make more effective addition outside, frightening people in. Julia, don't say that, even in jest. I'll be glad to take Karkov's meals out. Well, you needn't bother, Miss Collins. I look after him now, as I promised Mr. Dupre I would. Good night. I'll be back when you open in the morning. Thank you for the tea. Well, there's no need to see me out. I'll see the front door is properly locked, and uh, may I suggest you keep it that way? We won't open it to anyone till you arrive, Sergeant Hall. Fine. Good night, ladies. He seems quite clever. I'm glad he's on the case. I'm sure you are. I mean, I'm sure he'll catch the murderer. He's more apt to catch that hopeful look in your eye. may pick up a bit tomorrow. That loony bin and its bloody murder snagged all the business today. Oh, well. That our lorry. Yeah. Sweet to the sweet. Good night, love.
Karkov? Miss Collins. Meg? Meg! Down here, Miss Hawthorne. Oh. What happened, Sergeant? Well, you're all right now. Sit down. Now, can you tell me what frightened you? I couldn't sleep. I came down to get a glass of milk. I heard noises in here. Then I noticed. Lucretia Borgia. Her hand. The hand is broken off. Is that all that startled you? Not broken. Cut. The Ripper did it. He moved. Now, Meg, you are having a bad dream, walking in your sleep. I saw him move. He came at me. No. Please believe me, Sergeant. Let's have a look, shall we? Hmm. <laughs> well, hello, my fiends. Uh -huh. You've uh, caught me at a uh, wonderful time here. I'm doing my hobby, my horrible, monstrous hobby, that is. <laughs> I, I love um, putting together models, as you might can tell, because, you know, after all, going out among the world looking for artifacts for the museum isn't as easy as it seems. And you, you, a lot of the times you have to actually get things and put them get together uh, yourself, such as, well, uh, Bela Lugosi's Broadway on uh, Dracula on Broadway, that is. And it's, it's, uh, it's got uh, quite a lot of um, instructions here and, uh, uh, and, and it tells all sorts of different things, but you know, you know, I found a fellow back in November uh, uh, that's, that's a master at putting together models as such as this. His name is Joe Mariani. He lives in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And, well, a friend of mine, Gary Marshall, and I visited him uh, in November, and we did a wonderful interview about all his wonderful models and how he came about it and and how he puts them together oh, I'm not even going to t start telling you even more let him tell you in his own words okay let's go to the fi
Greetings, everyone. <laughs> this is Bobby Gum Monster, Internet Horror Host of Monster Movie Night. I'm here with Joe Mariani, the great model collector and maker. <laughs> that is Joe, tell me something. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? Well, like every young boy in the early 60s, I walked into a hobby shop and, you know, looking for the regular airplane, you know, uh, car models. And there it was, like a beam of bright light was shining and there was the Frankenstein model from the Aurora company. And I was like 98 cents. So what I did was I ran outside and I collected bottles enough to make 99 and uh, 98 cents, got the money, bought it. Now I brought it home, opened it up and the exhilaration I got, I was, I was, I was, well, you captured. Felt, you felt like Dr. Frankenstein. I felt like, yes, Dr. Like Frankenstein. Putting together the monster. But then again, I couldn't afford the paint. Oh. So, uh, until then, I collected more bottles and I started painting with the, you know, the, the little uh, oil paints, which were never good. Yeah. And you painted them and you displayed them proudly on your dresser. And then one by one, you couldn't wait for the next one to come out. Dracula, Phantom of the Opera, The Mummy, The Wolfman, all... And you could not wait f for the next one. To come oh, out. oh! Uh, so I'm, that's how I was hooked, and oh, uh, yeah, that's how I went. Well, I know what you mean. I did the same thing once. I uh, started with the Frankenstein monster as well. Uh, the Aurora, got it painted, got it set up, had the glow in the dark hands. I mm -hmm. loved it. Yeah, it it made me sleep so good. I put it on my television set. Well, me and my brother shared a room, a bunk bed. Yeah. Well, every morning I'd wake up. Mm -hmm. My Frankenstein monster was gone. It moved. And so I'm like, looking for it, looking for it. Finally looked under the bed. That's there it was. The gun. It moved under the bed. Well, I put it back. Couple nights, it did this like two couple nights, you know. Mm -hmm. Every morning I'd get up, it was gone. <laughs> I found it under the bed. So I, the third night I waited, I watched. And I pretended to be asleep. My brother, he got up, he's older. He got up. Got the monster, put it under the the uh, with the bed. No, he was afraid of it. Oh, okay. Still That's is. Better. He's going to kill me when he sees it, but he still okay. is. Yeah. I've told the story many, many times, but he still is. But anyway, that's the fun of it. Yes. Um, is is scaring others, scaring yourself? Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, um, tell me a little bit more about you. Okay, myself, um, you know, I did the monster stuff until, you know, I later became a teenager and, you know, started to get into sports and, you know, girls came and then my mother, like everybody else, would throw my comic books out and my monster models. And then I um, served on the, the, uh, the police force in New York for 22 years and time for retirement. I came down here to retire and I was looking for something to do. Everybody says, get a hobby, do this. So I forgot all about you know, monsters, and so one day I walk into a hobby shop, a local hobby shop here in Winston-Salem, and look, the, in a case they had the four, the core four models built on display. Frankenstein, Dracula, the creature, and the wolfman. I'm saying, oh my God. Then I went to the aisle, and there's the, there's the Polar Lights reissues, and from there on, I was on the internet, I was making them, I was dishing out two or three a week, I was just like, captured again and then that's it and then I then I um, you know I started you know there's a community out there like you said there's a big community out there and you think you're the only one but you're not and uh, I've been going to a great convention we'll get to that if you want later sure. but that's how that's how it happened and I was reborn again in the monster model collection uh, people see it they don't really know how to act, react to it <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they don't not react, but then they they think it's kind of cool after a while. Cool, you know, it's not like you're 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 a Star Wars collector or something like that. People do have a fascination with the uh, monsters, and Universal monsters are, you know, I say if you're in the age between, you know, what I am, sixty four, or I say let's, let's say sixty five mm -hmm. and forty five, you know, you oh, know what yeah, it is. You sure, sure, yeah. Uh, Cause yeah, you're talking about yeah being you know people having strange reactions. Well, right. <laughs> I mean they come into my house 
Well, it's a museum. Yeah, I've, I've seen I, that. I opened it up in uh, 88 as a museum. And when they come in, of course, it's our house, too. Mm -hmm. Well, they think it's one of two things. They think it's first it's a haunted house. You mm -hmm. want to run through the... Right. No. Right. We no. don't do that. It's a display. Second thing is they want to touch. Yeah. Um, Never. Yeah. No, any collector and hobbyist or what have you knows one thing. Do not touch right. someone else's collection. Unless you permission. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You have a lot of trouble with that? No, not really because I'm, I'm a watchdog. If I see, like, I'm looking at Gary right now. No. <laughs> no. But, you know, you know I, have, I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I watch them. Um, I, I offer for them to see it, and I'll I'll, I'll give them that. You right. know, my displays are not big, mostly not too expensive. If something happens, oh, you got a great collection. Don't yeah. don't don't yeah. put it. It's 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 wonderful. It's, I'm looking at it right now, all around me. Yeah. I'm seeing old friends. I see some new friends. Yeah, and and yeah. It, it's it's great. I mean, yeah. you, you've uh, even if you guys got it started, it's on a long road yeah. to, to you. I'm sure that you'll be moving some more rooms too. To oh, please. I can't get rid of them, but you know, I, I make a space. Of, I, I sell some stuff to make new space and, yeah. you know, some things that you have to let go of, but they're all labor of love and it's tough. Yeah. Getting back to the, you know, the feeling of the horror. Yeah. I looked at you when you walked in and I love it. I just, I, I can't get enough of it. I think it's great. <laughs> I just, I know, I'm just, I love the look, and I love what you're doing. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm so glad. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we saw, um, actually, Gary Marshall, my friend and, and uh, cameraman and driver and, and, and collector and everything. He's over here. But... Um, he actually showed me, told me about you, mm -hmm. about uh, being in the Winston-Salem Journal. In yeah. fact, that's how he found about out about me was through the Winston-Salem Journal okay. years ago. And uh, but uh, yes, yeah, so I, I looked it up online. Of course, back then we didn't have online. Now we can look right. at everything. So, so great, and, yeah. and yes, I, I read your uh, you, everything that the guy had wrote about you and and the interview. It was so great. Oh, it was good. He did a great job. And I was so glad that uh, when they called, that you said, "Sure, come on down and you know, let's absolutely." Let's, let's I mean, talk like, and yeah, I stuff. That, that, that's very great. I yeah. appreciate it very yeah. much. And uh, you said a convention. What convention did you go oh, to? I, 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 I never went to the Wonderfest convention, which is a great convention. I'm, I'm told anyway. But I do. I did get my cousin into the into the hobby, and I and he lives in in New York. And uh, we go to the Jersey Fest convention, which is held in September. Uh, they do a great job, Rob Saloni. Uh, all the guys over there do a great job with the convention and there's some great you know sculptors there there's the uh, painting classes there's uh airbrushing classes the day before the convention and uh you know the, they have the, the display room uh for the dealers and uh, it's it, if you ever want to go to a convention and you can't go to jersey fest and you're on the east coast get up to jersey fest uh, if you can't get, can't get the Wonderfest, get up to Jersey Fest. Um, uh, they have a website. They do a great job, and it's getting better and better every year. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Well, before we wrap this up, I, mm -hmm. I got a couple of things I'd like to give you. Sure. Okay, first off. Oh, excuse me. Here we go. First off, an uh, unashamedly and abashedly plug of myself, <laughs> a autographed picture of me and Boris. I w love it, and it's going to go right up there if I can find some room, but I, I really appreciate it. Thank you very You're much. Very, thank you. And thank you. that's not all. That's not all. Since you are a great collector, great maker of models and wonderful stuff, back in the uh, 60s or so, Famous Monsters came out with a contest for Aurora model makers and he gave out an award. Well, I don't have that, but I do have the next best thing. I went and made you an Aurora award of, um, let's get this right, there we go, uh, uh, of model making. Got mm -hmm. your name on it, everything fully framed, yours to do whatever you wish with it. And well, thank you very much. I mean, the guys at Jersey Fest are gonna laugh at this because they're so much more talented than me, but listen. You got an award. I got an award from a great guy. All right, so take that. You can win all the awards you want. Um, <laughs> mm, I have this. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Bobby. I mean, it was a pleasure. It was, it was my pleasure. Oh, my God. And, well, anyway, folks, you saw it here first. Well, unless you saw the Winston-Salem Journal. <laughs> but then second. You saw it here yeah. second. Live, though, or undead. Either way, I'm not really sure. Anyway, let's. Uh, we'll go back to the film. See you guys later, okay? Scatty, scatty stuff. Ooh, what's Count Floyd would say? I say keep screaming, but it's okay. Ah!
Bob K. Keep screaming. Go with him. He's the one that's that's new and fresh. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> Just wax? I'm sure I saw him move. And what about Lucretia Borgia's hand? Oh, oh, the work of some vandal in the crowds today. We just didn't notice earlier. No, Julia. I saw both hands on the woman just before I went to the kitchen. The hand isn't there now. <laughs> there. If it was only just cut off, how did it leave the room? Nobody else has been in or out. <laughs> Have you been there long? Uh, Did you see anyone after the museum closed tonight? Did you see anyone after the museum closed tonight? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Very well, you may go back to bed now. she saw. In fact, he might be the one behind all this nasty business here lately. He's a beast and a cretin. Uh, Miss Hawthorne, now that your prey is gone, uh, Miss Collins is the man's only hope. Uh, even a beast doesn't bite the hand that feeds it. Well then, Sergeant Hawkes, and what were you doing prowling about outside in the dead of night? Waiting for the murderer to return to the scene of his crime. It happens, you know. Maybe he never left. Julia, sell this place. Let's get out of here as soon as possible. All right, all right, Meg. We'll see. And I don't care what the price is. Just get rid of it. But this is all you have, Meg. You can't just give it away. Let me handle the business. Ladies, I suggest you try to get some sleep now. Thank you for being so quick to respond, Sergeant. I'm glad it was nothing more. No, oh, and I'll see that the glass in the front door is replaced first thing in the morning. At Scotland Yard's expense, I trust, since you broke it. Julia! At the Yard's expense, naturally. Good night. Good night, Jack. Our days on this earth are as a shadow, swifter than the wind of shuttle, flickering faintly as a candle, and is quickly snuffed out. So let every man set his house in order, for here the wicked cease from troubling, and here the weary be at rest. Our dear departed brother was one who feared God and eschewed evil. He comes to his grave in a full ripe age, as a shock of corn cometh in its season. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any longer. The Lord gave, the Lord taketh away, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. I can't wait around any longer. I have a business to run in New York. Are you going to sell me those wax figures or aren't you? At the right price. 
That's impossible. Dupre's property hasn't been legally transferred to his niece yet. I'm sure some other good lawyer will see that the whole thing is done in escrow. Mr. Burns, uh, come around to the museum this evening after closing. I'll be there. Please. You asked him to call after closing? Why, certainly. We're going to get back and open the museum as fast as we can get there. There'll be customers waiting. I'd say the period of mourning is officially over, wouldn't you? Double, double toil and trouble. Fire burn and cauldron bubble. It's like the big pot of witches brewing Macbeth. We keep the wax boiling night and day. Sometimes we have to melt parts of figures, sometimes entire figures, because in time they do deteriorate and they lose their shape and texture and the likeness is spoiled. Now over here... It's all like a scene doc in a theatrical warehouse. Exactly. And we even tree fashion parts of figures so that when a new fiend or monster bursts upon the world, we can have him on exhibition almost immediately. <laughs> Miss Collins. It's Uncle. I'm sorry, Miss Collins. I didn't think you'd be down here. I should have covered it up sooner. But why? Uncle wasn't a fiend or monster. No, but he was a victim. As I said before, we like to be prepared so that when his murderer is finally caught, half the tableau will already be completed. You'd put Dupre on display in his own museum. And you don't find that a trifle mercenary? Gauche? No, I think he would have ordered it. You see, the success of this museum is based upon sensationalism and not sentiment. Is there a direct entrance to the cellar from the outside? Yes, but it's always locked. It's never used. Well, it certainly hasn't been used in a long time, but there must be another way to enter the museum. Why? All the doors were locked the night your uncle was killed. And last night, all my men were watching all the entrances, front and rear. Yet someone... <laughs> you know it's a pleasure doing business with somebody that can make up their mind. I'll bring over the bank draft in the papers tomorrow. Well, splendid. And I'll have my crew come in next week and take all of this stuff out. Well, at your convenience. And I wish you luck with the monsters in New York. Thank you. Mm. Good night. You don't mean you've actually sold the wax figures? I have, although it's hardly any concern of yours, Mr. Flexner. It is my concern. I shall be without a position. You might speak to Mr. Burns. Perhaps he'll take you to New York. You know more about the museum than anybody. No. Why should I have to leave London? Besides, I have Karkoff to take care of. And Burns cannot stand the sight of him. Put him in an institution. No, I gave my word I would always look after him. You and Karkoff must just work out your own domestic difficulties. Mr. Flexner, perhaps if... That was brutal, Julia. The man is sensitive. An artist. He's a leech. A bloodsucker who attached himself to Dupre for years and probably stole him blind. Uh, I, I, what do I, you want? Uh, Don't be unkind. He can't tell you. I, uh, You're not allowed up here at night. Go back to your place in the cellar and stay there. Uh, I, Karkov, you mustn't grieve about Uncle. He's at rest now, just sleeping peacefully. <laughs> Your flower is fading because it has no water and you have nothing to keep it in. Is that it? <laughs> Bye.
But we're an happy crowd, our arts is free and gay. Fathers carving tombstones all day long, while digging graves for corpses in the churchyard across the way. Fills me older brother's heart with song. Good evening, Governor. Oh, good evening. How are you? Happy to see you becoming a bit of a study these days. Is that the only song she knows, that one about death and dying? Oh, it's death and dying through the best business on this street at the moment, Governor. <laughs> I suppose you're right. It was raining so hard I couldn't find a can, so I might as well celebrate. Give me a half and half, will you? Half and half it is. Gee, but we're a happy family. There we are, Governor. Oh, thanks. Say, Father, would you join me in one? Happy to oblige. Ask the gal, too. You said that's the only way you can shut her up. While clipping graves and tending tombs and cleaning out the crypts, here's what me nephew loves to laugh about. Cousin Kate is weaving wreaths, me boyfriend's hanging crepe. We are all as happy as can be. Grandpa's a coffin maker, Grandma's ill. May heaven take her. Gee, but we're an happy family. Da -da -da -da. Gee, but we're an happy family. Hello, love. Well, you said to drop around a day or so. So? Oh, you do have a knack for bad timing. I've got another engagement directly after work. Break it. And that's not the way I keep my friends up. Here we go. Is it a special celebration of some sort? Yeah, I just closed the deal. Deal, Governor? Yeah, I bought all those wax figures in the joint next door. Every ugly one of them. Oh. Good evening, Mr. Baxter. Filthy, rich Americans. You're all alike. You don't give a damn about anybody. I don't give a damn for your opinion, that's for sure. Come over here with your bloody dollars and cut something off that I've saved years to build. All right, all right. I've got money. That's how I get what I want. You've got talent. Build another waxworks. This took me a lifetime. Take another lifetime. You rotten picker. Hold on, Mr. Flex. You can't come in here and selling customers. Now, come on, step over to the bar. I'll... I'm leaving. But I warn you, Mr. Burns, this time, your money won't do you any good. I'm not going to allow you to plunder my wax museum. I'll see to it. Oh, he's got the courage of a tip mouse. To hell with him. Come on, drink up. Sit down, sit down, drink up. Mr. Burns, time to close up. Huh? Huh? The rain stopped. You can get a cab now. Oh, okay. Oh, oh I, I, I got to settle up. Oh, you're there. more than a square, Governor. And no charge for the sleeping. <laughs> All right. All right? Sure, fine. Take it easy, huh? I will, I will. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, okay. Now, your best chance to aim a cab is three blocks north at Oban Station. North at Oban Station. That's right. Right, thank you. Good night, good night. Good night, Governor. And hurry back. I will. I will. Well, I, I see he made it. I wobbled off to get a cab. Evening, Laurie. Cheerio. <laughs> Mr. Burns, I, I thought you was on your way home. Well, I'm still celebrating. Besides, we got a date tonight. Not tonight, love. I told you. Uh, my money's as good as any other guy's. It's not a matter of money. Oh, wait a minute, you tramp. Hey! What were you doing? Just being cute with me back there in the saloon? Hey, none of that. 
Oh, I'll have my friend there take a nip at your bottle. Oh, 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 oh. That's telling him, love. Good night. Veronical ladies of the street ducks, not sweepers of the street. But, Sergeant, don't you... No, I don't care about that now. Just do as I told you. Good morning. Where is Mr. Flexner? He hasn't come to work yet, and he's terribly late. Thank you. Oh, Sergeant Hawks, when will you allow us to open the museum for business? Just as soon as we've finished looking around and asking questions, if ever. Miss Collins, are you all right? Yes, thank you. Good. No prints. We'll have no need of those, Jones. You may go. Karkov. Did you see anything or anyone during the night? Oh. Oh. No. Your flower was found on the dead man. You know that. Karkov, it makes you look very guilty. Listen to me. Well, you must have seen someone take the flower from your room. No. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Fowley. Please be seated. I was just opening up when your man handed me the new shocker and asked me to step over. I mean, it, it, it's getting like a bloody butcher shop in here. Yes. Now, did you see anyone, anyone at all, after you closed up last night? No, sir. But, begging your pardon, sir, didn't I just hear you say the poor beast here was guilty? I said he looks guilty. The white carnation he took from Dupre's coffin was found in the dead man's buttonhole. God. Uh, it's too obvious, too much of a calling card. Oh, I see what you mean, sir. Karkov, are you certain you didn't see Mr. Flexner during the night? Oh. Very well, you may go back to your room. You may go back to your room, Karkov. Speaking of Mr. Flexner, I saw him last night. On your way home? No. He came storming into the music hall during the evening. Mad as a boiled owl at Burns he was. They had a run in. No, uh, a, a bit of name calling was about the size of it. He didn't fancy the idea of Burns making off with all them monsters. Did Flexner threaten him? Uh, said something about something about stopping him. Uh, he'd see to it. Uh, well, Laurie might recall exactly. Thank you, Mr. Fowley. That'll be all for now. Any time, Sergeant. Uh, Mr. Flexner, about last night, I'm sorry Oh, if that's I... perfectly all right, Mr. Fowley. Perfectly all right. Oh, 
Oh, do you mind? Are you very late, Mr. Flexner? No. Mr. Burns is very late. The late Mr. Burns. Yeah, you know about his death. Yes, I was on my way to work when I read about it. And I might add, with a great deal of pleasure. Would you mind telling me where you went after you left the music hall last night? Wouldn't mind at all if I could remember. Try. Well, I... I went back to my rooms and drank every drop in the place. And that was all? Oh, no, that was just the start. Then I went over to Soho and practically drank them out of business. Then I drifted down to Limehouse and tried to drink them out of business, and suddenly the lights went out. And you didn't waken until this morning? In a Limehouse alley. I was about to start all over again when I read about it. Would anyone in Limehouse remember you? Possibly, if I could remember them. And you can't name one pub you visited? No. I do remember Chinese, I think. They're very nearly all Chinese in Limehouse. Yes, well, you see, this was a woman, and very striking. Ah, that narrows it down. Another question, Sergeant? No, not a question. An observation. I had the feeling your face was vaguely familiar. Now I see there's some resemblance between you and Jack here. Well, you see, no one knows what the Ripper really looks like. So as I had no model to guide me while fashioning the figure, I might have been guilty of a slight touch of vanity. Odd sort of thing to be vain about? Mr. Flexner. You're late, and you look a disgrace. I feel splendid. Yes, no doubt you're delighted that we've lost our buyer. And have you finished poking about, Sergeant Hawkes? For the moment. Then may we please open and take advantage of the brisk trade waiting outside? Very well. Open up. Oh. Cash in. Oh. Thank you. And for heaven's sake, Mr. Flexner, go somewhere and tidy up. And do gargle. <laughs> Hmm. You know, dear fiends, on a cold winter's night, there's nothing better than other than watching monster movie night uh, than to cuddle up with a good book. That's right. A good hard copy bound book. Especially this one, since it's called Monsters from the Movies. It's uh, one that we got from our own um library here at Gargoyle Manor. It's it's one I've had for a very long, long time. It gives me ideas for not only decorating the manor, but also for choosing old films uh, that, well, frankly, without books like this, I wouldn't even know the synopsis of some of these films. So how can you pick a film without knowing a little bit about it, hmm? <laughs> I mean, like Human Fiends here. It, it has stories about, oh, let's see, there's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There's oh, The Invisible Man. Hmm, werewolves and vampires and demons and Dracula, of course. <laughs> I mean, after all, you know, when you have Bela Lugosi, what more could you ask for? Hmm? <laughs>
you scream and that door was locked I couldn't get in you know that you unlocked it for me from the inside I don't care what you say Julia I saw him don't talk about it anymore tonight I'll stay with you till morning in the morning I'm packing my bag and I'm going away I don't know where but away from here I uh, wish you wouldn't Miss Collins I have a reason, a theory. You don't believe me either. You're like Julia. You think I'm a silly child having bad dreams. Not at all. Your uncle's death wasn't a dream. It was Burns. However, I think someone is only trying to frighten you. And I promise you every protection if you'll stay. Just give me another 24 hours. All right, Sergeant Hawks, I'll try. Good. Now, what I think you need is to get away from all this for a moment. Change of scene, a bit of relaxation. What have I been saying? I'm going to the East End this evening, to Limehouse. I don't suppose you'd care to join me for supper at some exotic oriental restaurant, would you? Limehouse? I've never been there. Sounds exciting. If Julia will agree. Oh, I'll approach her. I rather think she'll be in a compliant mood, what with all the business the museum's been doing today. With two unsolved murders on your hands, what will Scotland Yard think of your squandering time dining a lady in Limehouse? Oh, well, I'm going on a matter connected with this case. Oh. Uh, yes, it is business, but uh, I eat, you eat. If I combine all three, I'm not squandering time, I'm saving it. Shall we say eight o'clock? Eight o'clock. Till then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Who is it? Tim Fowley, ma'am. Mm. Good evening, Miss Hawthorne. Come in, Mr. Fowley. First of the month, and you're Johnny at the Rat Hole to collect your rent. Oh, no rush, ma'am. Mainly I popped by to ask if you'd be staying on. Isn't there a lease? All me and Dupre ever had was a, was a handshake. You're welcome to stay on with the same thing, if you like. At a fair boost in rent, no doubt. Lord love you, no, ma'am. Not a shilling. My own business is not too good. I'm happy to have this place rented. Oh. Uh, well, you're a gentleman not to take advantage, Mr. Fowley. <laughs> no, ma'am, I'm, I'm just a beer salesman. But I'll be happy to have you pop to the music hall any time you like for a pint on the house. Well, uh, thank you. I might just do that tonight. Uh, my, my ward is going out for the evening. Good night, ma'am. Uh, good night. The Chinese serve the slipperiest food in the world, then hand you a pair of slippery sticks to pick it up with. <laughs> Would you ask um, the dragon lady to come in, please? Dragon lady? Yes, Yang Chu, the owner. She'll tell you fortune, if you like. Oh, yes, I like Sergeant. Michael, please. Michael. And I'm Meg to those who take me to supper. 
You haven't found what you came looking for, have you? Oh, I've seen you questioning the owners and waiters in each place we visited, behind my back. I never was a very clever detective. I'm sorry you've had bad luck. No, I've not had bad luck. The longer it takes, the longer our evening. Oh, good evening, Madam Yang. Good evening. May I present Miss Collins? Mm -hmm. A great honor, Miss Collins. Well, Miss Collins would be pleased if you told her fortune. An even greater honor. Thank you. Drop them all over the plate. Go ahead. The red stick points directly to the leaves, which are your physical well-being. I regret to say you are in grave danger, Miss Collins. She always gives the bad first, makes the good look so much better. There is serious trouble in your life. Someone from beyond the grave is trying to contact you. Uncle. Ah, this one falls across the leaves of your heart. There is hope. Here it comes. Things will change. You will soon come into a great deal of wealth. And life will be very different for you. The lavender stick. Very good. It tells you to trust a tall stranger who has recently entered your life. Lavender? Thank you for adding that, Madam Yang. I add nothing. The leaves and sticks tell all. Perhaps you could tell a little of my future, Madam Yang? If you will hand me your cup. Without the sticks. A man named Flexner works at the Wax Museum. Do you know him? Yes, I have seen him. Night before last? He was here. Quite late, say, almost dawn. The law requires we close at two. I know the law, and I know you, Madam Yang. Was it almost dawn? The law requires we close at two. insisted on seeing you, although it's a lot of flim flam in my opinion. I have a letter concerning you, Miss Collins. A letter concerning me? Also Mr. Flexner and Karkov. It's from Claude Dupre, posted the day he died. Somehow it was lost or misdirected in the post. I only received it late today. Is it a will? That question the courts must decide. It bears Dupre's signature and a date. That makes it a valid testament. Meg. Mr. Southcote. As you know, I've been approached by Mr. Burns to sell out. He keeps raising the price and it's now very tempting. But what will happen to Flexner and Karkov? I always intended they should inherit the museum. So if I should decide to sell, I wish a sizable share of the proceeds to go to them. For my niece, I will bequeath certain other very valuable assets which she may easily convert to cash. But I want you to make sure that Julia Hawthorne, whom you know I dislike and distrust, can't touch the estate which is much larger than anyone suspects. I will make my decision and come to see you about the new will the first of the month. Of the month. Make sure my niece is present, signed Claude Dupre. Today is the first of the month. He contacted me even though he's in his grave, just as the dragon lady predicted. <laughs> Nonsense, Meg. Dupre posted the letter while he was still alive. If he posted it at all. 
Mr. Southcott, in my opinion, the letter clearly establishes you as the executor of Dupre's estate. Thank you, Sergeant. Miss Hawthorne, you may stay here and operate the museum together with Mr. Flexner until the courts have ruled on this document. How do we know this letter, curiously misplaced until now, isn't a forgery? The signature can be quickly authenticated. May I suggest you leave this dismal place, my dear? Take rooms or go to an hotel. I've been begging to. I shall expect an accurate accounting, madam. Southcott won't let go. He knows something. Lawyers always wind up with a juicy piece of every estate. And Dupre's letter indicates the estate is much more valuable than anyone suspected. I knew the old muckworm had a fortune hidden somewhere, and we're not leaving this place until we find it. Michael, I know I promised to give you 24 hours, but... Only a few more hours. I brought you this. We are not permitted to carry them. Don't hesitate to use it. I'll be stationed in a cab directly across the street all night. Now, if either of you is disturbed by anything, anything out of the way, signal with a window shade. I have a key and I'll be here immediately. Same old dreary jaunt as usual, Mr. Fowley. Same as usual. Here's hoping you bump into something pleasant for a change. Well, same for you, Laurie. Good Cheerio. Night. Evening, love. Lonely like. Sergeant Hawke, Scotland Yard. Can I help you, Miss Mel? Oh, my mistake, Sergeant. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night, Miss Mel. Sergeant Hawks, he'll be right here. Oh, I expect he's sound asleep too, out there in that carriage. Really, Meg, I think you're becoming an incurable insomniac. There, that's what made the sound. The guillotine has been sprung. What do you mean, gone? Cockle. 
Maybe he can do something. Maybe he already did. Uh, give me that pistol. It needs a steadier hand. after Dupre's hidden treasure from the outset. But then when he thought that Dupre was going to sell up and move everything out, he killed him. And then when Meg and Miss Hawthorne came along and still intended to sell, he killed Burns in order that the figures wouldn't be taken to New York. That poor unfortunate girl from the music hall must have seen him coming back here that night after closing and recognized him. And so he had to kill her too. Yes, the man was a master at disguise. We found out that he'd once been an actor. So when he posed as uncle in my bedroom that night, he was just trying to frighten me into leaving. Then he'd have a free hand with his search. And of course, he had keys to every room in the place. But he couldn't risk being seen coming in the front door. So night after night, he'd lock up and come back in through the secret panel. And poor deaf Karkov never heard a thing. Not until the night he saw the girl's body being brought in. 
He'd come in wearing one of the Ripper's costumes and go searching for the hidden treasure Dupre told him about. Mm, well, then he was in danger of being discovered. He'd wheel the figure behind the curtain and take its place. Well, so far, so good, Sergeant. Now we can start scratching about to find the old Lippenny's hidden wealth. That won't be necessary. Not one of these instruments from the Ripper's bag is surgical steel. They're all platinum. The world's most precious metal. Mr. Prey must have spent years forging them himself. And hid them in plain sight in the Ripper's bag, a la the purloined letter. <laughs> it was audacious, but it worked. Then these tools are the other assets mentioned in Dupre's letter. The dragon lady was right, then. Yes. Your life is going to be different. It is finished. And in all modesty, I think both likenesses are perfect. So exhilarating, hey? But poor, poor hunchback fellow. Uh, tried to be a hero. Hmm, that's what happens when poor monsters try to be a hero and save the female. They get all waxed over, right, Boris? <laughs> and, hmm, did you guess who it was along the way? Were you sleuth enough, uh, Sherlock Holmes enough, to figure it out that it was the bartender and not Mr. Ray Milland himself? <laughs> well, honestly, I thought it was someone totally different, but I wasn't about to say it out loud, right, Boris? <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed our first feature of the year 2019 on our big season 10. Woo, Terror of the Wex Museum, Inside the Gargoyle Manor, the Monster Museum. Now that's entertainment. <laughs> and until next time, when you come back to get your tickets to our wonderful museum of freaks and shrieks and monsters to see yet another episode of horrors, monsters, and all the things that frightens you to death. <laughs> Until then, keep screaming.